Let's go to Romans chapter 12, verse 2. We're in a brand new series. This is our second one on mind renewal. This is so awesome of a study. We're in part two, and we're going to go to Romans chapter 12, verse 2, and look what it says here. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So, here's what we know about mind renewal. It is a vital part of the believer's life. It needs to be a priority with you. You can't put this on the back end of your responsibility or priority list. It says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Mind renewal is on par with renovation. In other words, it's hard work when you're redoing a house or you're redoing your basement or you're doing something. It's going to take some work. And I want you to stop and think with me. Everything you see around you is started in the thought realm. Everything. The chair you're sitting in, somebody had the thought. We didn't walk in one day and all of a sudden a chair showed up and they go, oh, look, what is that? Oh, let's call that a chair. Well, we'll use that to sit in. Somebody thought about it. If you look at your car, that started as a thought. You know, Henry Ford was somebody that primarily, the horseless carriage, and all of a sudden they, and how many of you know that that car looks pretty different? Your car is very different than the one Henry Ford first invented. Why was that? Because thinking went on. People began to think. So your life, everything in your life, a lot of things in your life, you look around right now and guess what? It started in your thought realm. The career you chose, the school you're going to, the wife or husband that you chose started in the thought realm. And so one of the things that we find is personal transformation is tied to the renewing of our mind. Fulfilling the will of God is tied to the renewing of our mind. Because wrong thinking will produce wrong results. And I'm I'm sorry, wrong thinking will produce wrong beliefs. Wrong beliefs can never produce right outcomes. And so what's the standard for how we should think? It's the Word of God. God thinks. What did the Lord say? My thoughts are not your thoughts. What did the Lord say? My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Jeremiah 29, 11, the Lord said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. God thinks. Think about it. The question is, what is the quality of your thinking? Is it biblical thinking? Because God has given us the high, awesome privilege to know his thoughts. You should never say, well, God's thoughts are not my thoughts. I could never do that. I could never. No, it's the invitation of the Lord to come and to come up to his level, to take his thoughts upon us. He's given us his thoughts mind. We have the mind of Christ. When you become a born-again believer, you possess the mind of Christ. And the way that comes about is through the written Word of God, thinking the thoughts of God, and you develop the mind. Now, what we learn in our very first lesson, there's a distinction between the brain and the mind. We need to understand the brain and the mind are very separate but work together and are designed to work together beautifully. I almost brought this in. I've got them ready. I don't know if we'll see it. But anyway, there's a video of a young man, and I went back and found it on YouTube. He's autistic, and he's in his 20s now. But when he was a young man, they put him in a helicopter and flew him over, I think it was Rome, flew him over Rome. You know, a lot of the old ruins and those beautiful... uh, Uh, intricate buildings and things like so he got into the helicopter took a 15 minute flight and he's just sitting there looking looking over the city and you know all of the pillars and the stairs and the windows and all that kind of thing and they put him in a front of I think it was five yards of paper in a setup and gave him a stool and from his memory from his brain and mind working together drew out that area they flew over, several feet wide. They took it and examined it, 
and there was just one or two or three minor mistakes of a little window or something like that. And I'm thinking about showing it to us, but it wasn't the best quality. Why did I bring that up? Because, you know, sometimes with autism and things like that, and even there's, there's been brain injuries where people have gotten brain traumas and suddenly their ability to do math mysteriously kicked in. In other words, the brain was stimulated and it caused there to be almost like a super intelligence to come up in that individual. And there's others like that. There's, there's other people, memories. You give them any date for centuries and centuries. And if you say September the 7th of, you know, 1848, what day was it? They'll tell you what day. Another young man, he started telling significant things. Incredible. So there is no such thing as a stupid person. That's a lie of the devil. There can be wrong thought patterns. There can be what we call strongholds of the mind and stuff like that. But your brain and your mind are different. Your brain is like your computer at home or work. It's the hardware. Your mind is the software that's loaded onto it. And so if right now there's things that you're really good at, it's because you've developed that area of your life. Okay, if you, some of our military men in here, you specialize in certain areas. We take people that may have never shot a gun before. We take them out and teach them proficiency with weapons, teach them how to run sophisticated tanks, put them in airplanes, fly sophisticated aircraft that's top secret in, in just the way that it performs and what it can do. How do they do that? They get in a learning process. And that's what we should do is be learners of the word. Because when you are a student of the word, then all of a sudden you begin to excel when the light of God's word comes into your mind. The entrance of thy word, O Lord, does what? It gives light. And then the scripture says, in your light, Lord, we see light. So personal transformation is tied to the renewing of your mind. Your brain is going to process all the information. Like right now, you don't know to tell your eyes to blink and, you know, your breathing and your digestion, all that. Your brain is a sophisticated, a very ultra-sophisticated super computer that is magnificent. I mean, it's beyond comprehension. And your mind is what you've chosen to allow in, okay? It's what you've chosen and what you've focus on. But one of the things that we see is back to this right here. It says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Why? So you can prove or demonstrate what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That means this, you fulfilling the will of God is directly tied to the renewing of your mind to bring it into alignment with God, with his word. That is not bondage. It is not binding you. It will loose you. It'll free you up. George Washington Carver, one of my favorite people to study, was absolutely brilliant, born. They don't even know his birthday. He was born to slave parents, stolen as a child, should have never lived. And, of course, he was adopted into the family. And, and then he was a sickly child, so he didn't get to play with a lot of children, so he'd study a lot. But he loved the Word. He loved God. And in a time when racism was abounding in this country and there was all sorts of difficulties and things, he was invited to speak at a convention in Chicago. And he was given 10 minutes and it turned into, I think, beyond an hour and a half. He was offered the equivalent salary if somebody adjusted the income. It'd be equivalent of a million dollar a year salary what he was offered back in those days. And people would ask him, how do you know all this? Where did you get your brilliance? And how did you learn these things? He took the peanut and discovered 300 uses for it, 150 uses for a sweet potato, revolutionized and saved the South because the boll weevil came along and began to destroy the cotton crops. And we had become so dependent upon cotton. And then he learned how to plant 
crops in the cotton fields and put in what the cotton took out. And that's where the need for the peanuts to find out what to do with them because there were so many peanuts. You know, they, they began to put back in the soil and they said, what's your secret? How'd you learn all this? Put his hand on the Bible and he said, it's all in the book. It's all in the book. He had a relationship with God. He loved the word and spent time with God and became a genius. And it's for everybody that will do the same thing he did. And we're going to look at that today. How can we change our minds? How can we see our minds renewed? Look at this. Genesis chapter 6 verse 5. I want to point this out before we get to those. Genesis chapter 6 verse 5. It says, God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. That's amazing. You know, I'm in a life group and down at Southwest, we're studying the book of Genesis right now. And we, we got into that discussion about God literally made it to a point. He repented. He, he was sorry that he made man because the thoughts of man were only evil continually. And only eight people survived the flood. How many of you know that's cutting it close? <laughs> eight people. Noah found grace in his eyes. But here's what I want to point out. Every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Your thoughts unchecked will produce imaginations. Your thoughts unchecked will produce imaginations. And then according to 2 Corinthians 10, 3, 4, and 5, Paul said spiritual warfare is fought in the arena of imaginations. You know, I was at a conference this weekend, or Friday and Saturday, with uh, Alex McFarland. He he holds these conferences across the country called Truth for a New Generation. Kamal Saleem was there, which they said to both tell you hi, sends their love. And, and so there were other speakers there, and uh, there was one person I hadn't heard. So there's Alex on the top, and uh, the woman in the upper left-hand corner, I'd never heard of her, and her ministry. Her name's Tina Marie Griffin. She used to be an actress. She lived in L.A. for 10 years. She's a mother of four beautiful little kids. I met her and her husband. Her husband was out there as well. And so before I had to leave yesterday afternoon, so I caught the, the last session I could catch was her. There she is on the upper right. And she was out in Hollywood, and she said, I saw what went on after the curtains came down and the lights went off and just the uh, evil. And so what she is, she has a website. I'd love for some of you young people and, and moms and what have you, and especially those of you that have youth, to go to called counterculturemom.com. I think that's it. Put that back up. I think it is counterculture.mom. Anyway, what she does is she keeps just a pulse on cartoons and gaming and movies and music and, and what's coming out of Hollywood and what's coming at our children. Now, I don't consider myself sheltered at all as to what's going on, but when she shared yesterday, and what she's doing is making sure parents, do you know what's coming into your children's homes? Let me give you one example. This one got me. A uh, little cartoon, sweet, bright, little colors, beautiful music, and I can't remember exactly what the way, but this is the essence of it. Hi, my name's Molly. I was born a boy, but I really felt like I was a girl, and you may be too. And if you would like to learn more about that, come visit me on, and that kind of stuff is going out. Movies that are not talking about suicide on Netflix, the one, the 13 reasons or whatever it is, they're not talking about suicide. They are showing teens how to commit suicide. Made me sick in my spirit. It just, it's, it's crazy. Now, why? Why? 
Well, MTV, she pulled out a thing on, and she's a firebrand. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I, I went and talked to her and her husband afterwards. I was just so appreciative of her ministry. She's on fire for the Lord. But um, she brought up something on MTV. And, 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 I mean, none of this is secretive. It's all out in the open. They said, oh, um, we just get the kids in a highly emotional state through the music, through the audio visuals, because suggestibility is at its height, and when we get them there, we can, we can put anything in them. There is devil worship at levels you have never seen. Our Grammys and what have you, Katy Perry, that grew up in a church like I was. One of my, a friend of mine, a very close friend of mine is friends with Katy Perry's parents and has been for 20 plus years and what have you. She grew up singing Jesus song, speaking in tongues, and her dad traveling, and mom still travel and preach. And literally, she said, well, I wanted to be the next Amy Grant, but that didn't work out, so I, I sold my soul to the devil. You know, I mean, you can, it's right there. And, and the last time, she, a couple of Grammys, I watched that, and now listen, I've been to pagan festivals in India where there's open demon possession and there's people holding fire pots in their hand and evil power so thick it made my legs feel like jello because I was walking around videoing and I videoed a guy. He had a piece of steel shoved through here and through his tongue. And so I went up and videoed him and man, I was looking at something in him looking at me. And when I got up close to him, my legs started getting like jello. It was the most evil bloodletting and things. Okay, so that's, that's pagan stuff. That's evil stuff in India. I mean, it's raw. It's everywhere. But when I watched that thing on the Grammys that year, it was a devil-worshipping thing. The only difference is it's the latest, greatest cameras, videos, sound, and everything like that. So anyway, that's here. Why is that? I'll tell you why. To renew people's minds to darkness, to capture our children. And it's happening on our watch. And we're the only answer to that, that whole dilemma. Light is the only answer to that. Okay, so why am I saying that? Because you might say, well, I certainly don't watch MTV or those kinds of things. The question is, what do you allow in your mind? Thoughts unchecked turn into imaginations, and you don't even have to watch TV to have vain imaginations, wrong imaginations. You got to guard your mind, and we're going to lead up to this. But the point here in Genesis 6-5 is thoughts produce imaginations, and Paul said in 2 Corinthians 10, 3, 4, and 5, to cast down imaginations and any reasoning, any arguments, any knowledge that's against the knowledge of God. The battle is for the mind. The enemy's after your mind. You have to take thoughts captive. You must take thoughts captive. And the Lord makes it easy for us. He says this, be not conformed to the world. Don't be, trans Don't be conformed to the world. Don't let the world form and fashion you. But he said, be transformed. What is that word transformed? Metamorphosis. It's where we get the word metamorphosis. Your life right now and where it could be, oh my gosh. You know, the biggest room in the world is room for improvement, right? <laughs> the biggest gap in the world is where you're at and where you're capable of being. Do you know the most powerful nation in the world is the imaginations? imagination. We believe somebody had an imagination. We could put a man on the moon and we did it. We had a president at that time that spoke it. It was powerful. JFK spoke that. We did it. It's been said if man can conceive it, he can achieve it. Well, what ought to happen to a spirit-filled believer? that has the Word of God, born again, spirit-filled, the power of prayer, the power of the Word. There is nothing impossible to you. 
You can do anything God has called you to do. Nothing and nobody can stop you. Only what's too big for God is too big for you. But God doesn't work alone. We are co-laborers together with him. Even after he ascended to heaven, Mark chapter 16, he gave them the great co-mission. He said, in my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, nothing shall harm them. Even when people are trying to poison us, it won't work. They shall, if they drink any deadly thing, it shall, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And then it says, after he'd spoken this to him, he was received up out of their sight. And what does the Bible say? The Lord went with them, working together with them. But if you're going to work with God and God's going to work with you, you need to start thinking like God thinks. And when you change your thinking, you'll change your vocabulary because you have to get this one. If you're going to walk in great faith, you must change your vocabulary. You've got to quit talking negative, quit talking death, quit talking sickness, quit talking failure, quit talking betrayal, quit saying what the enemy has done, start saying what God says about you, be his mouthpiece in this earth. Because thou shalt decree a thing, and it shall be established unto you. The exploits. It's time for exploits. The people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. People with great faith don't talk negative. People with great faith. Where did the time go this morning? Good Lord. People with great faith don't say what is. They call things that be not as though they were. When David, somebody, I heard somebody say one time, never run at your giant with your mouth shut. David did not run to Goliath with a closed mouth. You uncircumcised Philistine, I will. And he started saying what he was going to do. Goliath will not come down until we start talking the way God wants us to talk. But we've got to get, listen, everything goes back to our minds. Got to renew your mind. All right, so this is what I wanted to share with you today. Just three things. This is, uh, oh my gosh, I got the wrong set of notes up here. Huh. <laughs> Lord have mercy. How'd that happen? Okay. Hang on. Where'd they go? These are good. I got these for you here. All right. These are simple. Number one, you have the ultimate control of your mind. I hope you write that. Write this down. You have the ultimate control of your mind, not the devil. You are the keeper of the gate. Jesus said in Luke eleven twenty one, 21, when a strong man fully armed guards his estate, his possessions are secure. Let me tell you how powerful the water is, the water, well, the water of the word. Ephesians 5, 26 says that he might sanctify and cleanse it, talking about the body of Christ with the washing of the water of the word. The scripture talks about your conscience can be defiled, okay? There's everything from a good conscience to a weak conscience, okay? But he said, to the pure, all things are pure, but to them that are defiled, nothing is pure. Okay, the word defiled is simply is a word that means to, to taint. It's like to dye a cloth or to stain, you know, nothing worse. I remember one year back in the old building, had on a, just a nice crisp white shirt. We were taking communion, spilled the grape juice right on my shirt. That's why you have to keep shouts around. Y'all know what shout is? Keep the little thing. There's a sermon in that. Shout it out. Glory to God. When the enemy comes and throws dirt on you, shout it out. Glory to God. 
God inhabits the praises of his people. But anyway, so I got this purple grape juice all over my shirt. It was just a stain. That's what that word defiled means. And your conscience, you may have a good conscience, but there might be a stain in there. Well, thank God for shouts, you know, because shouts, little shout packages, they'll take it out. I mean, I got on that. You could not see the stain. And I thought, now there's a sermon right there. By the washing of the water, by the word, the word of God will wash and cleanse your defiled conscience. Get the stain out. I don't care what you have seen or witnessed or experienced. The word of God is sufficient for anything in your life. There's power in the blood, power in the word, power in his spirit. Get all that stuff out. So the first thing, you have the ultimate control of your mind. Number two, what are we talking about? Mind renewal. You must be diligent to control your thoughts. In other words, and I know this is not anybody here, but if you're addicted, if somebody was addicted to, what do you call them, soap operas, and you're having marriage problems, and you DVR every single episode of As the Stomach Turns, you, you DVR every episode, you can't miss an episode. Houston, we have a problem here, and it's not the devil. There's something, those, those things are sickening. Those, you know, they glorify adultery, betrayal, they rehearse the curse, you just name it, everything you don't want in life. You know, the music sounds like a funeral because it really is. <laughs> so you have to be diligent to control your thoughts. And by that, when I mentioned all that other stuff, what do you, what do you have coming in your mind? What do you listen to? Music. You've got to be careful. Music has a message, and, and you know, you'll be sitting in, I've been in grocery stores or restaurants, and all of a sudden, I, I look down, and my foot's tapping, and I'm like, stop that. That ain't good. That's not a nice song. It's not a good song. That was a bad message, and my foot was tapping. And then, have you ever done that, where you've gone in a store, and they have the music playing, and all of a sudden, you go out and it's playing in your head. Yes. Have you ever noticed you can't just go, I don't want to hear that anymore. I don't want to hear that anymore. It just keeps playing. You have to overwrite that. You need to get a worship song on. Get something full of the word going on inside of you. Third and the final thing, and we'll close on this because this is, this is the fix right here, what I'm about to tell you. This is so simple and you should already know it and it should already be in your notes because we covered it in our last series. Number three, guard your intake and here are the three surefire ways to see mind renewal take place in your life. Three sure. Number one, read the Word. Read the Word. I make sure I read the first three chapters, at least, of Revelation every so often. So the other night, that, or the other morning, it was actually early morning, I thought, I'm going to read the first three chapters just because it's the revelation of Jesus Christ, not the Antichrist. Some of these Bible teachers yes. need to study a little deeper. Yes. You would think they have a revelation of the Antichrist. It's not a revelation of the, it's, an, it's a revelation of how the Antichrist is going to get the worst whooping he's ever had in his life. It's God's master performance is what it is. The beast, the false prophet, the, un, the satanic trinity. I mean, read the story. We win, my God. And big time. The, the angel comes down with the key to the bottomless pit, opens it up, throws them down in there. The beast, the false prophet, and the ant, all that stuff. So, the revelation of Jesus Christ. If you don't know those first three chapters, I'm not sure you really know the whole person of Jesus. Because the Jesus I hear and preach is kind of a milk toast wimp in America that I hear from some pulpits. I'm like, do you know who Jesus is? Do you really know who he is? He said some strong things. 
in those chapters. But anyway, I went through the whole book. Just had to go through the whole book. And what did it do? Put that sense of victory in me. Man, we aren't going to stumble out of here, limp out of here. We don't need to go to caves and hide with tribulation food and tribulate for a while before the Lord comes and gets us poor little weak, sickly Christians so we can go to our little cabin in the corner of glory land. Where do we get this in the Bible? It's not in the Bible. But you have to read the Word. Secondly, you must study the Word. Study the Word. There's so much help now to study the Word. So many free Bible apps, free Bible programs. And don't live on just podcasts and other books. Go directly to the Word. Go to the Word. Go to the source. When you're hearing a podcast, when you're hearing another teaching or reading another book, that's an echo. When you go to the Word, that's the Lord's voice. His voice is upon the waters. The Spirit of God Himself, the teacher, will lead you and guide you into all truth. You will sit at the feet of Jesus just like Mary did. And then Martha, you know, she's busy running around worrying, fretting, and getting ticked off at everybody and comes in and chews Mary out, and Jesus had to rebuke her. Martha, Martha, you are worried, anxious, and troubled about many things, but Mary chose that part that is needful and cannot be taken from her. When you go to the Word, you're sitting directly at His feet, You get to be with the master. You get to be tutored by the Holy Spirit himself. What did George George Washington Carver, the Lord taught him those things. And it was genius. It was awesome. So this is it. Guard your intake. So that means read the word, study the word, and meditate the word. Read Joshua chapter 1 today. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. It's the master key to success. Three simple things. The the earmark of the Holy Spirit is simplicity. Casting down imaginations. That means overthrow any reasonings and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. 2 Corinthians 10, 5. And bringing into captivity every thought. How many thoughts do we bring captive? Come on, say that. Uh, How many thoughts? Every thought. Don't let thoughts slip through. One last story. Growing up in West Texas, when we moved to Colorado, I'd go back there and they had this thing called Johnson grass. And it was a near curse word to the farmers because Johnson grass, when it went to seed, it could spread. The seed would come out. The wind would blow it. Wind was always blowing in West Texas. And one day we got a call when I was down there from a farmer down the road, and they had a cotton patch that had been overtaken by Johnson grass, but I hadn't seen it yet. So they sent, they went down and they took their swather down there. And what you do is you cut it and it goes into a windrow, and then you bring a baler. And then it brings it up and bales it, and then you put it on a trailer, and then they were just going to feed it to livestock. So the time came to go bale it, and we went down there, and us kids would be on the back, and we took the, as the bales came off, we would take them and stack it on these big trailers, you know, semi-trailers, and then we'd stack those, and you just pull them and park. And when we got to that field, I looked at it and said, this was a cotton field? You could see no sign of the cotton until you got to the very center of the field. There was a little small stand of cotton. One thought, it only takes one plant that gets planted, goes to seed, the seeds break out, the wind blows, spreads it, and it brings forth after its own kind. One negative thought unchecked. One little offense nourished, rehearsed. One little negative thought the enemy plants in your... How many's ever had a thought about somebody 
And I mean, you just got worked up. It took your attention. You couldn't think on anything else. And it went on for weeks and weeks and weeks. And then you found out you were totally wrong about that other person. Anybody ever done that? I've done it so many times. What happened? A thought went unchecked. It got planted, started producing, and it produced imaginations. And you started having High definition movies, 4K. Oh my God, you saw in in explicit detail betrayal, gossiping, backbiting, all these things. And then come to find out none of it was true. You could trace it all the way back to one little thought. So what are we talking about? Mind renewal, okay? You have the ultimate control of your mind, but you must be diligent to control your thoughts And the three surefire ways to do it is read the Word, study the Word, meditate the Word. Can we give the Lord praise for His Word today? Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you so much for your Word. Thank you, Lord, for giving us your thoughts. And that, Lord, your thoughts can become our thoughts. And I thank you, Heavenly Father, that this people is hungry for your word. Thank you, Lord. Oh, I thank you that we read your word and study your word and meditate your word. That we are strong in the Lord and the power of your might. And we have the helmet of salvation on. We thank you for it. Lord, I thank you. Believers are being transformed in our life groups. Lives are changing. Marriages are being healed. Marriages are being made strong beyond comprehension and beyond whatever thought they could be. Lord, I thank you that your word is doing so much in this place. In Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray before we leave here today, Lord, if there's anybody not 100% sure, not 100% sure, that they're born again, that their name's written in the Lamb's book of life, that they're heaven bound when they die, that Lord, today will be that day. Let it be today with believers praying with me, believing God with me. If you're here today in the Northeast campus or the Southwest campus, or you're watching me online, and if you were to be asked the question right now, are you 100% sure you're heaven bound? And if you can't answer that with surety, a certainty, and you're willing to give your life to the Lord today, you're ready to receive him today, and you'll let me pray with you. Would you lift your hand up anywhere in this building, in the Southwest campus, and online? This morning, we had seven people actually born again, first service. Where are we at? Thank you so much. Somebody in the back there? Anybody else join this one? Is there somebody online? Think of how powerful that is. Then in a moment of time, you go from death to life. We've got someone just raise their hand online. God bless you. That's the most powerful thing to think. You can go from death to life in a moment. Anybody else? Southwest campus, you may be there today and you're, you're kind of thinking about it. You know what? A, a young lady came to me after service today. And she said, I've just been coming. A member invited her and she said, I just want you to know that um, the words you're saying, they're starting to affect me and, and I feel my heart opening. I said, oh, I said, thank you for sharing that. So we talked a little further and I said, have you ever made a personal invitation to the Lord? And she said, no. And when I asked her one question, she started crying, and the Lord was obviously touching her. And guess what we got to do? After church was over, we got to pray. She received the Lord into her life. She was being touched. She wasn't quite there. And maybe some of you are like that. You may be being touched right now. But listen, I'm I'm just doing what the Word says. The Bible says today's the day. Now is the time. Don't put it off. Don't put it off. Tomorrow may never come. There's a lot of people that plan to pull back into their house yesterday and they didn't realize when they pulled out of the house it'd be the last time they'd ever come back. And I pray that's not the case for anybody here. Anybody else, join these. All right, let's stand up. And if you just give me one more minute quickly, whoever raised their hand, come join me up front here. Come walk up front.
Hallelujah. And online, we're going to pray. Just give me another moment. Are they coming? It's important. I do this for a reason because Jesus said it's important that we acknowledge him publicly. Come on up. Hallelujah. Awesome. Glory to God. So that'll be seven, eight, nine people got born again today. Hallelujah. Awesome. Thank you so much. Listen, there's a person online and this gentleman here, and we're going to all pray together. I want you to pray it out loud so you can hear it with your own ears. And you do that on the line with us. Let's all pray together. Lord Jesus, I receive you as my Savior. I make you Lord of my life. Thank you. I am saved in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.